Hello everyone, my name is Aruhi and welcome to my channel. So guys, in my today's video, I'll show you how to perform image classification using Swin Transformer. So let's start. First, we are, uh, let's uh, see the data set. Okay, so I have my data set in this folder and we have two folders, train and test. Open the train folder, you will have two folders, Daisy and Dandelion. So these are the two classes on which I want to perform the classification. I want to train the model Swin Transformer to you know classify these two classes. Okay, so inside Daisy, we have the 200 images of Daisy Flower and inside Dandelion, we have 200 images related to this class. Okay, and in the same way, if you'll open the test folder, we have again two folders daisy inside daisy we have related images and inside dandelion you will have the dandelion images okay so this is the data set now i am going to show you this jupyter notebook this jupyter notebook have the entire code so let's start so guys for my today's class the image size which i'm using is 224 into 224 patch size is 4 into 4 and 4 into 4 into 3 means equals to 48 the this means we are having 48 pixels in one patch okay and we are going to have total number of patches we are going to have is 3136 okay so now we are importing all the required modules so now guys before uh, working on a data set i want to explain you all the layers and the functions of the swin transformer on a single image we will execute all the codes one by one we'll see how to create patches we will see how to uh, perform linear embedding then uh, patch how patch merging works how self attention works right we will see all those things on single image first once we understand the whole code then we will load our data set and we'll train our custom image classification model okay so let's start with the code so the image we are using for uh, this learning purpose is this so this is the image okay we are uh, writing an image over here we are opening an image then this line is for using for transformation what we want is once we read this image we want to resize that image to this size and then we want to convert that image into a tensor okay so here we are providing an image to transform now in this variable we have our transformed image image tensor we have in this uh, variable okay after that here you can see i'm just printing out the size so we have our image one means batch size three number of channel because we are using a colored image and this is the height and width of the image okay now have we have our image in this variable now first step in swin transformer is to divide your image into a patches no, non uh, overlapping patches okay so this function is responsible for creating the patches. So patch size we are defining here is four and X means the input tensor. So what is the input tensor in our case input image tensor? We have our input image tensor in this variable. So we'll pass this tensor image over here. Okay. So, so let's understand the function first. We are having uh, providing B, H, W and C over here batch height, width and channel. We are getting number of patches, number of patches, height and width over here. So what we are doing is height of image is 224 divided by patch size. Okay, so that is 56 in the same way, 56 and 56 horizontally and vertically, we are going to have 56 patches and then we are converting that into uh, this format okay and finally this function will return you the patches okay now we will call this function and we will provide this in, uh, input tensor to this function and we will see the patches okay so that's what we are doing over here so we are calling the function tensor image is a variable okay this variable where we have converted our image into a tensor we are passing that okay window size is 4 because we need patches of 4 into 4 size that is we are defining over here now in these variables we are storing the number of patches in patch size from here like this and then we are printing let's see what we get over here so we have 3136 patches after running this window partition function now we have 3136 patches of this size okay and now using this code we are plotting all those patches over here 
so you can see we have 56 patches this side and we have 56 uh, patches on this side okay so now we can't see these patches properly because the size is very small 4 into 4 means 4 pixel horizontally uh, horizontally and vertically we are having 4 4 pixels okay so now what we can do is to visualize these pixels so I have written one code this small script using which you can see the you know patches here you can see all the patches one by one let's see the very first patch see one two three four four pixels on this side and four pixels on this side okay so using this code you can see those patches properly if you want to analyze the data set you can see those patches like this okay now we have divided our data set into patches next step is linear embedding we want to convert these patches into the format which transformer network accept right so that means we want to convert these patches into a um, into a embedding 1d vector okay so for this 4 into 4 into 3 patch size we want to convert it into a um, you know one dimensional vector with some specific length okay so let's see how this patch embedding will work so we have a class patch embedding and see image size default is 224 we are also using the same patch size we are using 4 only this channel is 3 because we are using colored image and this embedding dimension is 96 over here this embedding dimension simply means when you are converting your uh, patches into a 1d vector so every vector should have 96 numeric values okay so this is what 96 is so this is the in init function guys these are just we are providing the parameters we are providing the values for patch and you know uh, patch resolution number of patches we are providing all those things this line is important what we are doing over here this line conf 2d is responsible to convert your patch into a linear embedding okay so now this forward function what we are this forward function is the forward pass of this patch embedding class okay we are providing the um, image input tensor to it we are checking the shape after that we are applying a linear embedding you know we are converting the patches into a linear embedding then we are flattening it we are then um, using transpose on it okay so after that this will return you uh, uh, this x simply means embedding 1d vector for each patch okay so how many how many patches we have what we have seen here how many total number of patches we have 3136 but over here size is this now what we want is we want 3136 1d vectors and each vector should be of 96 length okay so this is what this class is now let's call this patch embedding class on the input tensor and see so you can see this is the image opening the image this is again the same step transformation step and then we are converting that image into a tensor okay till now we understood now here we are calling a patch embedding class and we have defined the image size patch size channels and embedding dimension 96 you can change these values okay as per your data set so now 96 over here means means each vector will have a 96 values and then patch embedding we are applying it on tensor image remember this tensor image the image which we have converted into a tensor after resizing it so we are applying this patch embedding on that image and here you can see first we are checking the shape and then we are printing the values so the size is 1 3136 we have 3136 patches and every patch have uh, 3136 vectors we have and every vector have 96 values you can see this is the value for first patch this is the vector for second patch and this is for third patch okay now every vector have 96 value now in my next over here in next cell let's just see a value of embedding vector for single patch okay so using this you can see the value for single patch and you can see we have these 96 values for single patch the very first patch in the same way if you want to see the second patch you can write it like this and you will see the values of second patch okay so till now we have done patchification and we have converted our patches into a vector embedding vector now next step is the first 
uh, the way, there are stages in swin transformer right so the very first stage of swin transformer will use this basic layer now guys this code all these codes are present here so what i have done is so i have created this file okay let me open it and all the codes are you know the codes which are related to swin transformer are here right so just scroll down and you can see see the mlp layer is here and then window attention module is here so all those codes i have mentioned here we are just calling these functions over there patch merging is here okay so what we are doing is we are just from this file we are calling this basic layer okay so dimension is 96 right input resolution is 56 into 56 because we have divided our image into patches and when we divide our 224 into 224 image into 4 by 4 size patches so we get 56 values vertically and 56 value horizontally okay window sizes here we have defined that so stage 1 to this stage 1 what we are providing the embedding what is this embedding so this is the embedding which we have created and we have converted our image patches into the embedding so that's what we are providing here so to this to this basic layer the a uh, swin transformer of first layer we are providing the embedding to it and then we are checking the shape we are checking the shape of it and we are printing it so over here you will get the same uh, output okay because we haven't performed any patch merging or anything on it okay so that's why we are getting this so these are the embedding and this is the size now let's perform patch merging so for patch merging see this this patch merging class again is we have the patch merging code over here and you can see these four lines so when we perform patch merging so we uh, this patch merging technique pick the four uh, uh, four patches and then merge them using this torch.concat okay so you can understand the more about it from this code so over here we are just calling this patch merging class and we have explained that the input is 56 into 56 and dimension is this okay then we want to this we have this patch merging in this variable and now we are providing output what is this output so you can see the basic layer the first swin transformer um layer from the first stage of that is stored in this output and we are providing it over here and after that when you are checking the shape you will see that we have 784 patches and this is the um, size of each patch okay so earlier how many patches we have 3136 but now how many patches we have 784 so patch merging technique work so this 56 into 56 56 into 56 patches were the input to the patch merging but after pa this patch merging we have 28 uh, 28 pixels vertically and 28 uh, patches sorry 28 patches vertically and 28 um, patches on this side okay so and 96 into 2 okay so 96 is the uh, embedding uh, length we have defined above into 2 will give you 192 so that's why we have 192 over here 784 and 1 so patch merging have been done and over here i'm just displaying the values ba this one is a batch size 784 means number of patches are 784 192 means number of channels are 192 okay so how we are getting this 192 because you can see here the <coughs> the output width and height both are reduced by a factor of 2 and the number of output channel is 2c 2 into 96 you will get 192 uh, okay now now what uh, see when we work on swin transformers so there are two sub units first sub unit use uh, window um, attention layer and second one use shifted window attention layer so here you can see here i'm using the first attention the window multi head self attention layer and in this 
three lines I'm using shifted window multi head tension layer. Okay. So the only difference is see here also I'm calling the swing transformer block. Here also I'm using the same swing transformer block. The only difference is this shift size. So when you are using the first subunit of the transformer uh, block where you have this window multi head tension layer over there shift size would be zero and when you are using shifted window multi head tension layer over there you will define the shift size okay so that's it this is the only difference apart from that so this will be the first subunit of transformer block and this would be the second unit of transformer block now what we are doing is we are block one is this so we are providing the embedding from the above which we have done right the patch embedding we have performed patch embedding we converted our image patches into the embeddings okay so we are providing the embedding here also we are providing that embedding here also okay and then we are just checking the shape and we are printing out the values so you can see the shape in both cases is same but if you see the embedding see this is the embedding of the first subunit of the transformer block where we have window multi head tension layer over there we have embedding like this and this is the output of second one shifted window so you can see here the after shifting the values are different okay and before shifting the values were different on the top okay so you can see this is how this uh, window attention and self window attention we use okay now now what we do now so now let's work on the custom data set okay so this is how you can call the entire swin transformer model okay so before that i've just shown you all the codes in you know cells we have seen the output of each work so if you want to call the entire swin transformer you can call it like this okay and these are just providing you the shapes of it now what we want is we want to work on a custom data set we want to use this transformer swin transformer for image classification so we are loading our data set so remember in custom data set we have train folder and in custom data set folder we have test folder okay so we are loading our data set now to load the data in pytorch models we need to create the data loaders so i have created a function for that data loader function okay so you can see train directory and test directory these are the two variable names where we have our training data and test data paths we are just providing that over here okay after that here we are provide we are transforming it we need to transform the data right we need to convert all the images into a 224 into 224 size and then we want to convert all those images to a tensor okay so that's what we did when we worked on single image so now we are working on the whole data set so we want to perform we want to resize all the images of the data set and then we want to convert all the images to a tensor so that's what we are doing here we have mentioned the transform over here and here batch size we want to use is 32 train data loader test data loader and class names create data loader is the function which we used above okay so what we are doing is we are loading the data here in these things then we are printing the values and in class names you can see we have daisy and dandelion okay now now we have loaded the data set just let's just view the data set if we loaded the data set properly or not how we will know we will load the data set we will you know plot the image and we'll see if the data set is loaded properly or not so we are just loading the data set and you can see image and we have the corresponding class name over here so that means our data set is loaded properly after that we are using a swin transformer number of classes is length of class names so class names we have used here okay so length of class name is two so number of classes will be two over here after that we want to train our model now so for training what we are doing is see if device CUDA if CUDA is available then we will use that otherwise CPU will be used and we are providing the learning rate and the other parameters over here and after that here you can see 
we are providing the training data set test data set and we want to train this model for 10 epochs okay so we have trained it after 10 epochs you will see that the accuracy is very low because guys we are using a very small data set and we are training it for very less number of epochs and even i'm not using a pre-trained model i'm training the model from scratch okay so you can try on if you want to improve the accuracy you try to use pre-trained model and then uh, change the classification head and you can increase the data set and you can increase the number of epochs to train okay so after that you can plot the accuracy so for that we have a helper function file from that we are calling this and we can plot the accuracy and loss now let's perform the prediction so now what we are doing is this is the function we have this function okay we are importing this function from here and we are providing the model this is a trained model this is the image on which we want to perform the testing and we are providing the class names and you can see prediction dandelion and prob probability is 51 percent so guys this is how you can train your uh, image classification model in using the swin transformer i will share this code uh, and on github the github link is given in description section you can take the code from there and you can try it okay i hope this video is helpful thank you for watching